Hey friends, I hope y'all doing well. I want to come through tonight and share a few things for you uh, as far as worship. Uh, I had a young friend of mine ask me some questions about it and it's really been um, something the Lord has been highlighting to me this week so I wanted to share with you. Um, so what is worship? So I want to start there and then I want to kind of share with you how to do it because I think sometimes we think worship is just singing songs or um, you know, maybe if you're new to it, where it's like you got to get down on your knees and you know go like that. We think about worship like that, and that it can look like that at times, and it can be that way. Um, but I want to talk to you a little bit about what worship is. So it's actually God is God, right? He is the creator of the universe. He's the king, and you know how if you were to meet a president. Uh, you would kind of shake, you know, in the English monarchy, you would kind of dip and you would curtsy or bow. In uh, Asian cultures, you would bow. It's the same way with the Lord. You know, a lot of things on earth is like a copy of things in the spirit, things in heaven. But that's what we do when we come before the Lord. It's a way of acknowledging our respect and our honor to him and really you know, showing him that he is God, like we're letting him know that we totally acknowledge that he's God. So when you worship, it's your way of showing God that you acknowledge who he is and that he is God. Like we don't worship anyone else. Now, technically you shouldn't, right? Sometimes we do if we like our fans for certain teams. Sometimes we get to a worship point where you're like, wear all their gear. You won't miss a game. You're screaming and hollering. Like you're jumping around. You get the tattoos, you know, uh, season passes. You'll travel all over the world to see this team. Like you could be worshiping a team um, or a TV show or celebrity. There's other things we worship, but true worship of the Lord is like that. Like you'll go anywhere for him. You, you know, you are totally dedicated to him. You've given your life to him. Like it is what your life is about. So first of all, your life is the first way that you show worship your life, the way that you live your life, what you're preoccupied with. Like what's the first thing on your mind? What's the last thing on your mind uh, at night? The first thing on your mind in the morning? What is the, the one thing or the few, the thing that you just have to do or your day isn't right? Um, or what you plan your life around, you plan your day around. That is usually a good indicator of what you worship. And um, I've been doing a study on that for myself and I'm realizing there's a few things that I worship and it's like, ooh, that's not good. Um, so I wanna come to you today to just kind of talk about worship, but also how worship can change your life. It has literally changed my work life. So I wanna talk to you about that, but I'm going to read to you here, um, Psalm 29, which talks about worship in the Lord. And this is um, a Psalm of David. So as you know, David was known as a worshiper. David got in a lot of trouble, David uh, was, kind of haunted and lots of war and just kind of he was in the wilderness a lot he had his own family coming against him trying to get the throne like David went through a lot and he always found himself in worship he always seemed to come to the conclusion that worshiping God and following God like made it all worth it and that um he could thrive no matter what was going on if he worshiped God so I want to read to you Psalm 29 and it says this is a Psalm of David Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. And then, you know, he goes on to say, okay, this is what the Lord's voice does. So it leads me to think that if we would worship God the way we were supposed to, with um, with glory, we're giving them glory and strength, like saying that he's glorious and that he's strong. Ascribing to him means we're saying these things to him, um, giving him the glory due his name. The worship, we worship in the Lord in the splendor of holiness, like the the immaculate perfection of his holiness like we're really acknowledging that it says it goes on to say the voice of the lord is over the waters he breaks cedars it flashes like flames of fire he makes the deer give birth like his voice is powerful the lord sits in thrones over the flood he sits in thrones as king forever and he says may the lord give strength to his people may the lord bless his people with peace and so looking at this i'm seeing that there's a big correlation between how we worship the fact that we worship God and this peace and the strength that he has. Um, the Bible talks about it a lot. Those who run to the Lord, he's a strong tower. The righteous run to him and they're safe. 
Psalm 91 talks about if we are with him, we get to be under. We abide in his shadow, right under his wing, like right under his arm. Like that's such a safe place, being right here under somebody's arm. So if you think about that, it's a pretty cool, pretty not a pretty cool, but it's an awesome idea to think that we, if we worship God, we are in his shadow. We are in his presence. We are protected. So what does it mean to worship? So I think when we talk about worship, we always say, songs right you think about a worship song and that's good like that's a big way it's very very powerful to worship god and worship music singing but there's also something about worshiping with your life like how you spend your time your money what your heart is set on what you plan your life on, around but also things like um the way you treat others can be worship um you know Treating people the way the Lord have them treat. You have you treat them even if they're not the easiest people to treat that way. Or giving to the poor, doing what he says. All these things are worship. So I think there is something really big about singing worship, which I'm going to get into next. But it's really powerful to worship the Lord. It says here, like, in the splendor of his holiness, just recognizing that he's holy. You can even tell him that. Like, he knows that, right? But it is a beautiful exchange when we give the Lord our worship and I can feel his presence here now just lifting up your head and lifting your voice and telling him how great he is so it doesn't have to be song but it could even be like Lord you are so good you are great your name is great and it's greatly to be praised like these things are true and the Bible says that the Lord is enthroned on the praise of his people so when you start to sing or praise he's enthroned in that he makes his throne he sits there right so Where's the throne? It's a room. It's a place. So when you start to worship, you make a place for him. So that brings me on to my next point. Now, what we have a sharing today, um, a lady came to me and she wanted to pray. She was just saying she was having some turmoil in her house and, um, and that, you know, it was just such a dark cloud of her house. And I'm like, I've, I've felt that before. We're just, everyone's in a mood. We feel kind of dark and depressed. It's like, I don't know what's going on. What is that? And what I usually notice and find is that worship breaks through the atmosphere so that the demonic or any oppression of the enemy flees. The enemy does not like worship because his job was to be the head worship leader in heaven, and he got kicked out. So he's a real hater. I mean, think about the natural church. If you're the um, worship leader of the church, and all of a sudden they're like, okay, we got a new head singer, and you're like, what about me? Well, that was the enemy. He was in that number one spot of worship leader, and he got kicked out. In fact, he lost all his privilege. He lost his access to heavenly realms, and now he lives in a demoted second heaven, which is right above our natural heaven, like our skies. So that's why, you know, you know, people talk about it like in the book of Daniel, Daniel prayed for help from the angels. He said, look, I had to come through not only the, the second heaven where the Lord is, I had to come through the heaven where there is demonic um, interference and then I get to the natural heaven and earth. So the enemy loves to be just in your atmosphere and in your life wreaking havoc or just making you feel depressed. The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. And I don't know about you, but there's times in your life when you have such hope for things and you're like, oh God gave me this vision. I'm so excited. I know what I'm gonna do. And then the next day you're like, what was I thinking? Like, I don't feel like, I don't feel like I could do any of that now. Well, that's the enemy, okay? Now, sometimes it's yourself, right? Sometimes you'll feel like, I just, I don't know if I could do it. Now I'm out of the excitement of it. But sometimes the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The Bible talks a lot about seeds being planted and seeds that dry up. They, some seeds are trampled. Some seeds are on good ground and take root and they grow. So whenever you get something from the Lord or a word from the Lord or a good scripture or like a, a new revelation of how you want, the Lord wants you to live your life, or you just want to water that with his word and time and worship and pre in his presence because the enemy will try to steal it. And then you're like, okay, what happened to that expectation? What happened to that good, great thing the Lord was leading me into? Um, the enemy tries to steal it. So he can't steal it, but he, what he can do is frustrate you. In the book of Daniel, talks about him wearing out the saints. If he can't stop you, he knows you're saved. If you're not saved, we need to talk about that. Um, but if you're saved, then he's just like, I'm just going to wear her out. I'm just going to make her so ineffective that she's tired and she's distracted. And if I can make her feel depressed and she's got stuff going on with her kids and her marriage, then she'll never 
really press into God. She won't have time to pray. And she'll never reach her destiny. She'll go to heaven, but she won't do the things she was planning to do. She won't ever become who the Lord called her to become. And that's not what we want. We want to become everything the Lord has called us to become. So what is worship? Worship is lifting up your voice, lifting up your eyes, lifting up your heart unto the Lord to tell him how amazing he is. Okay. And he knows how amazing he is. But what we're doing is we're changing our focus from ourselves, what we got going on, what our family might have going on, work, um, and even what the enemy might have going, have going on, the, the tough things. We even take our eyes off the really great things in order to put our eyes on the Lord and we, we lift him up. The term, we lift Jesus high, Jesus will be high and lifted up. It says, the Bible says, if Jesus be high and lifted up, he'll draw all men to himself. Lifting Jesus up in one way is lifting his name, saying his name is greater than everything else. That's a way of worship. When you lead other people to Christ, that's a way of worship. When you share Christ on your social media or at work or with people that you don't even know, you're lifting Jesus Christ up and you're worshiping him. The Bible says he wants worshipers who will worship in spirit and truth. I think this is Romans... No, I got that messed up. Uh, Jesus is talking to the woman at the well in John 4. And they get to that part. And um, pretty much she's talking about where. Where is it to be done? In this temple, in that church? Friends, it's not, it does not have to be in a church. I get some of my best worship at home because I'm here. And this is where I want him to reside. And I worship at church too. But it's really special to be at home and worship because when you're releasing the spirit of God into your home, you're inviting angels because angels like to worship with us. You may see them. You may sense them. You may feel them. But angels come and worship with you because that's what they do in heaven. And you have angels assigned to you. The Bible says they are ministers who are there to assist those who are to inherit salvation, which is me and you. And if you're not saved, we need to talk about that. But angels, that's what they do. They're here to assist us in our calling and our destiny. Um, and every believer has angels. So when we worship, the angels are like, oh yeah, I'm getting in on this because that's what they love to do. They sit in the presence of God day and night. That's why you'll feel a shift in the room. It feels like, oh, Somebody just walked in, but you won't see anyone. That's the angels near you. And they're, they have the glory of God on them. So you can feel that beautiful feeling. It's, it's the Lord's presence. And um, so I just want to share that with you. And so how do you worship? For me, I like to worship in song. And for me, I like to pray in the spirit in song. For me, I like to find a really good song that's got scripture in it and that is adoring the Lord. And I love to sing that bad boy out like you guys don't know. The benefit of this is that you get to know God in a new way because you are fixing your eyes on the Lord. You don't go to the throne room and leave unchanged. So our natural man is here in our homes, wherever you may be. But if you're born again, your spirit is already in heaven. And so your spirit, your spirit and in truth, your spirit man and your truth, the one who's actually here that knows the rational things that Jesus came and died and raised from the dead. Um, it's here. Your spirit is operating in the spiritual realm. So what you want to do is you worship here, but you'll notice that your spirit starts start to take over. You may feel the presence of the Lord. You may feel happy. You might cry. You might um, start to feel like, oh, I have a sense that I need to, you know, forgive someone or I need to write this book. You never know what you're getting because when you're in the presence of the Lord, your eyes are fixed on him and it's like he's talking to you even without words. So I want to encourage you to worship him. So how do you do that? Like I said, I like to do songs, but you can even um, come and you can say, you can find a psalm that says things like that. Um, like Psalm 21, it says, ascribe to the Lord, O you heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. And so all you do is read the Lord's word back to him. Angels hearken to the word of the Lord. The Lord's word does not return void. So when you say what the Lord says, it is so. And the Lord picks up on it. He's like, oh, my daughter's saying, she knows my word. So Way to practice this is Psalms 30 and 21 too. It says, it's another Psalm of David, uh, a song at the dedication of the temple. So that's a big one. I will extol you or lift you up, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and you have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, I cried to you for help and you healed me. O Lord, you brought up my whole, my soul out of Sheol or hell and you restored my, to me life from among those who go down the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you saints. 
give thanks to his holy name. So that is a command, right? So I can say, Lord, I sing your praises and I give thanks to your holy name. Thank you, Jesus, that you are so good and you're so loving and you're so kind. You brought me out from the pit. You took me from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. You are great. Mighty are you, Lord. Your name is great and it's greatly to be praised. Now, I'm not singing, but I'm worshiping. And, and that is something that will break through the atmosphere for you. You will hear from the Lord. Um, it really clears up your vision, your spirit. It will be more in tune with the Lord and the enemy hates it. Um, there are other pieces in the Bible, even in um, oh, Revelation 19. Revelation is the book of the Bible that is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So it tells of future things. It tells of a lot of symbols in here, things that will come, but it's revealing Jesus Christ of who he is after the resurrection. So if you look at Revelation 19, uh, starting in uh, verse 6, it says, The marriage supper of the Lamb, supper of the Lamb, go down. Um, yes, yeah, 6. It says, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him his glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and the bride has made herself re ready. Okay, so all of that isn't is is like professing what's happening, but you can also say, "Hallelujah for the Lord our God Almighty reigns." Like that is worship. That is worship that you can say. And I rejoice, Lord, and I give you glory, Hallelujah, because the marriage of the Lamb has come. Thank you, Jesus, because there it's already happened. So even if it hasn't happened here, it's already happened. Like the Lord isn't waiting on the day this happens. He is all, he is not in time like we are. So the lamb, marriage the supper of the lamb has already happened. Our redemption has already happened. Uh, go to Revelation 15. There's another one. It says, great and amazing are your deeds. O Lord God almighty, just and true are your ways. O King of the nations. And so that might sound weird, but you can put it in your own words. Oh, Lord, you are king over all the nations. You are king of the world. There's nothing higher than your name. And you have done great and amazing things in my life and in life from the beginning. Oh, Lord God Almighty, you are true and perfect in all your ways. Everything you do is right. Everything you do is just. Lord, I trust you. You are great and greatly to be praised. And then go on to Revelation 15, 4. It says, who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name? You alone are holy. That's one. That's You can sing that all day. You alone are holy. All nations will come and worship you for your righteous acts have been revealed. Lord Jesus, you alone are holy. There is one found worthy. That's a song that I'm really in love with right now. It goes, there is one found worthy. The lion of the tribe of Judah. There is one found worthy, the root of David. And you can just keep singing. There is one found worthy. And you can call him whatever you want to call him. Those are several different names. Jesus is known as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He's also known as the Root of David. Lots of explanation I can go into there. But I just want to encourage you of that. This week, there was some time when everyone in the house just had a poopy face. Like, everybody was just, like, kind of depressed. And everybody was just kind of moping along. Things weren't going well. You just kind of... And we prayed about it. And then I said, I'm going to seal this prayer by thanking the Lord, of course. Another form of worship. And with worshiping in song. And so I got in the kitchen. Kitchen is my place, y'all. I got a little Google home in there. I said, okay, Google, play worship music. And it starts all my favorite songs. And it's really good. You can do it on your phone, too. Get yourself a YouTube playlist. Uh, here's a Spotify playlist called Top Christian Oh, my gosh. Library. It's starting. Okay. Goodness gracious. As y'all can hear, Google heard me, and she's starting to play songs. But literally, I don't even know what this is. Okay, Google, reduce volume to 20%. And so what you can do is you start that worship in your house and you'll notice that the atmosphere will change. Now, if you're new to this and you're, um, you're, it may not happen right away, but if you tarry, as the old folks would say, if you press in a little bit, maybe not just one song, but two or three, and your eyes are fixed on the Lord and your heart is open to him and you have your word, you have your Bible, and, and you start to just call things out, whatever the Lord brings to you, and you worship him and you thank him for the things he's done. The enemy does not like that. You can even thank him like, Lord Jesus, thank you for waking me up. Thank you that I drove to and from work today and I was safe. 
Thank you, Jesus, that you've called me into the kingdom of life and the kingdom of darkness. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my husband. Thank you for my future husband. Thank you for my future ch children. Thank you, Lord, that your plans for me are good and not of evil to give me hope in a future. I praise you, Lord, because great is your name and you are greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. And if you pray in the spirit, that is something you can do as well. Um, most church denominations say that you want to pray in the spirit in private, of course. And if you pray in public, then you want to pray in public and have someone interpret it. So it's nice and orderly. I like to pray in the spirit when I worship because sometimes you don't have the words. So I'll turn my tongues, the gift of tongues, which is just a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the gift of tongues. I'll pray in tongues and I don't know what I'm seeing. Sometimes the Lord will give me a vision or um, a revelation of what I'm singing, but I'll sing in, in tongues. And it breaks open the atmosphere because the enemy does not like that. When you pray in tongues, you're praying the perfect will of God. When you read the word and you worship, you are giving God all the glory and you're enthroning him into your situation, into your home. Home, and the enemy can't stand it. He has to go. So I want to encourage you that if you've been baptized in the spirit and maybe you haven't spoken in tongues in a while, it is a magnificent gift. It is a magnificent gift and I'm guilty of not using it enough. I pursued it when I first got saved and I just was like, uh, what happened? So I was like, well, it's not for me. And my sister's like, it's really for you. And so I went and did some studies and I asked the Lord again. He baptized me in my room and i had been praying in the spirit and it was such a beautiful gift because it, the Bible says it builds up your most holy faithful. So praying, it builds up your whole, your most holy faith. And it speak it prays the perfect will of God because sometimes you might pray a prayer and you're like, okay, well, I know I was gonna say for I was gonna pray for 30 minutes, but I'm out of stuff. Like I pray for my kids, my job, I really don't have anything. But if you pray in the spirit, it'll be the Lord's perfect will. Or maybe you're having a really tough time, you don't even know where to start. You can pray in the spirit. So I wanna encourage you of that today. If you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit and you're interested in that, you know, this is something really intimate and it kind of scares people because people are like tongues, what is tongues? If you're interested in that reach out to me i might do a separate class on that um i was baptized by the lord and the holy spirit firsthand and i've helped other people um uh, get into um be baptized in the holy spirit so i'm feeling like this is you know something the lord really wants us to have and i'd love to work with you on that so uh, i just want to encourage you that worship 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 find a song that you like and it's even better if the song has scripture in it it's even better if the lord if the song has scripture that edifies the lord in it it builds the lord's up it honors god it worships god a lot of the songs we listen to today are good right they're praise songs meaning god you've been so good to me and lord you took me you know you you took me out of the kingdom of darkness and now i can step on the devil's head and i'm good i'm good and that's great right that's good but we want to sing songs that worship god meaning you are great you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you when you sing songs like that he gets the glory it's not about what he's done for me it's not about how i'm doing great because of him even though that's good but when you sing songs about him you're worshiping god and the enemy cannot stand it so you don't have to be able to sing to do this the lord loves your voice what you sound like is irrelevant everybody's a singer everybody has a voice now you you may feel like oh well, i can't sing or somebody's going to hear it it doesn't matter who hears it people are going to be blessed and honestly I'm getting into this, y'all. When you worship in the spirit, you end up sounding really good. It's like the Lord anoints your voice to do things that you cannot even do in the natural. And so it's really important to worship. It's really important to lift your voice. It's something about lifting your voice. It's so weird. I was talking to my husband. I was like, you know, singing is just elongated talking with a higher pitch. What makes that so special? What Why is that? Because we can talk. And we worship the Lord with our voice. But it's something about lifting his name up. It's something about making it. La, 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 la. It's something about lifting up. It's like worship. It's not just singing anymore. It's not just talking. So I encourage you to worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. You are holy. You alone are holy. And you don't have to have a song. You can sing from your heart. You may start to birth songs. Sometimes I've prayed in the spirit and I've come out with songs. Like the Lord wants to hear your worship. He wants to hear your voice. And so I'm just going to pray for a spirit of worship to be on us. Okay, Google. Stop the music. 
that music is not meshing with what we're saying. So I'm just going to pray. I just pray, Father in heaven, that you show us the importance of worship. I thank you that you are giving us a spirit of worship, that we would just want to sing praises to your name. We want to sit and speak of your love and your grace and your goodness and your power and your worth. We will want to just get away and just be with you. And even being quiet and just listen to your voice is a form of worship. But I thank you that as we sing and we lift our voices, we just strike down all of the demonic oppression in our homes. We clear the atmosphere for the heavenly angels to come in, for the oppression to go. And we invite your Holy Spirit to live, your presence to dwell in us and in our homes, in our lives, in our cars, everywhere we go. Well, people will look at us and see something different. People will look and see something different on us and they'll be like, wow, I want what she's got. And we'll tell them it's you and you will give them what we have and you'll give us even more. Thank you, Jesus, because those who have given much more will be given. So we just worship you. I ask you to just give your daughters songs in the night. Give them songs. Give them songs. Give them songs. Give them even songs that have been on their hearts and they're just like, why am I thinking of this song? It's because the Lord wants you to sing it to them. It may not even be a Christian song, but if you connect with your mind in that spirit of truth and knowing exactly who he is, any song could be a love song as long as it's not, you know, freaky or nasty or profane. Any song can be a love song to the Lord. It can be a worship song because every song is about him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Lord, I just thank you for these daughters. I thank you for their hearts towards you. I thank you that you're doing a new thing in them. You're making worshipers out of your daughters because these daughters will be worshipers in spirit and in truth. Lord, I release them now. I release them now to sing, 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 sing. Where people have felt like their voices have been cut off or they haven't been chosen. Lord Jesus, show them that worshiping you is an audience of one. And it doesn't matter if they're chosen by a church or a group or a ministry or even people in their homes. Lord Jesus, that you hear their voices and that you are pleased and that you are enthroned on the praise of this one daughter. That you love the sound and you you hearken, you come low to hear this beautiful voice. Whether the world will call it beautiful or not. Whether even she will call it beautiful or not. You love it and you call it beautiful. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that you are coming forth now. And you are lighting your daughters ablaze with fire and worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I just encourage these daughters Pray, pray, worship, fast, and pray because the Lord is doing something new. And I pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I just want to encourage you today. There were so many times in my life where I had really tough stuff going on. Even in my marriage, just we weren't meshing. And um, um, I wasn't fully prepared to be a wife either, by the way. But every time I got to this place where I was just like, he doesn't get it. And I don't get it. I would worship. I would go and worship. I would go. Um, the Bible says, I think Hezekiah, he put his face to the wall. And he worshiped. He just put his face to the wall. I was like, I got nothing left. Help me out. And it's built a lot of spiritual fortitude in me. I could say that. And it built my faith and trust in God because I went to him. Instead of people, I went to him. Instead of food, I went to him. Instead of alcohol, I went to him. Instead of shopping, I went to him. Instead of going to my husband and going off of him i went to the lord and he anointed me and he filled me and built me up because i decided to go with to him instead of to myself and to things that would satisfy me temporarily i haven't always done that i haven't been perfect at doing that but i noticed that is a big key so i hope you have a blessed night i hope this blessed somebody i hope that you're encouraged to worship this week whether it be in song or in silence whether it be in beautiful words from the word to him or your own heart, whether it be prayer or being kind to someone, I pray that you will worship the Lord and I pray that you will lift your voice anytime you felt cut off or like you couldn't let it out. I pray that you would push through and shout unto the Lord. Bless you ladies and have a good, good night. Take care.